trigonometric identities is something that's very common in higher maths uh, three go three go no met tree okay now trigonometric identities what are they when we say trigonometric identities we mean something specific before that a little bit of a review now what is the meaning of an expression what is an expression an expression is actually numbers symbols and some mathematical operation like plus minus multiplication division that's an expression next comes the question of what's an equation an equation is simply a uh, expression followed by an equal to sign followed by a zero now what can we do to an expression we can simplify an expression or we can factorize an expression and in case of an equation we can always solve an equation meaning finding the unknown value of x also known as the root of x so whenever we have an equation we have to solve it and find the unknown value of x now when it comes about uh, expressions uh, or equations uh, we have some very common things in math they look like this is an expression ax plus b called a linear expression or a first degree polynomial expression quite a mouthful so the equation would be ax plus b equal to zero now when we have ax squared plus bx plus c that's a quadratic expression and the equation would look like ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero of course it can have a number here instead of a zero but we can always bring it to the other side to the left side and make it look like uh, this again now there are many common types of equation that we encounter in the syllabus a very common high school syllabus the most common are the linear expression this is the linear expression the quadratic expression then we have the cubic expression that looks like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equals to zero so this is the cubic expression and among them is the trigonometric expression of the trigonometric equation the trigonometric equation would look like this sine of an angle uh, let me call it theta as a pronoun it can be x it can be twice x it can be x plus 30 anything as a pronoun i'm using a theta so sine x equals to zero or some other number let me write a number that's a trigonometric equation or cos x equals to some number that's a trigonometric equation so these two basic trigonometric ratios make up the trigonometric uh, equation now let's talk about since now we have uh, a new sort of an equation and we are trying to solve how do we solve that equation but before that let's talk about some basic trigonometric identities because unless we have that we will not be able to solve that equation now this time we are talking about trigonometry as more of a algebraic form as a symbolic form not as a practical form for finding the length of a triangle or we can also use it to use uh, the actual length of a building or something that we know the length of we can measure the angle so we can use it in construction or in engineering in a practical sense but now let's talk about something completely abstract something that has uh, might not have any meaning in the real life of course it has some meaning uh, later on but at this moment let's talk about something completely abstract now if I think about trigonometric expression uh, if I think about sine x let's talk about this trigonometric expression sine x 
now we have another thing cos x now this sin x and cos x these are the basic these are the basic trigonometric ratios so these are the basic trigonometric ratios but now we are not talking about the ratio we are talking about something abstract this thing called sin x and this thing called cos x now the first basic identity is going to be the first one is going to be sin x divided by cos x gives us a new creature called tan x this is the first identity now let me tell you something about this symbol we can also write an equal to sign there's no problem at all but this three line symbol is called the identity symbol meaning sin x by cos x gives us something which is identical to sin x and cos x we can also could have written in equal to sign but it means they're actually identical so from now on instead of writing sin x by cos x we can actually write tan x it's a new identity so tan x is actually coming from sin x by cos x so this is a very important identity so we have this one the next identity is that the square of sin x and the square of cos x together it's identical to 1 meaning the square of sin x and the square of cos x together if you add it up it is equivalent to 1 of course this came from various calculations we are just going to take it as face value and remember it now from here we can get actually two more identities one of them is this sine square x is identical to 1 minus cos square x and cos square x is identical to 1 minus sine square x so these are very handy they come in handy so it's very very important to remember that these two basic identities one of them is sine x divided by cos x every time we see this instead of this we can easily write it because they're identical so when we write tan x we could have written this and this vice versa similarly this identity whenever we see sin square x added with cos square x this two angles has to be same then instead of that we can write one again when we see sin square x we can instead of that write one minus cos square x and when we see cos square x we can write one minus sin square x so this identity is very very important the next important identity it can be called the reciprocal identity this is the reciprocal identity now what's a reciprocal one thing that is extremely important that must be clarified between reciprocal and inverse in algebra what happens when we see the word inverse it means something this to the power minus one that's inverse when we say reciprocal by definition reciprocal means 1 divided by by that number since in algebra x to the power minus 1 and 1 by x is the same thing so what happens we tend to think the definition of inverse and reciprocal is the same thing but it's not in algebra x to the power minus 1 and 1 by x is the same thing so in algebra the reciprocal of x and the inverse of x might be the same thing but in trigonometry they are completely different for example in trigonometry when we talk about the inverse the inverse is referred to as something completely different when we talk about the inverse so we are actually talking about an angle so inverse of a trigonometric uh, value is actually giving us the angle inverse means angle so whenever you see an inverse it's an angle and it's usually referred to it as arc sine if it is the inverse of sine so arc sine of some value of any value so this is in many calculators and it's in very common practice instead of writing arc sine of a value 
people write sine inverse of that value so whenever we are talking about inverse so people get mixed up they feel that this sine inverse is the same as any x so they feel so sine inverse means 1 by sine no 1 by sine is reciprocal they are not like algebra where they are the same here they are actually different so you have to remember arc sine of a value which comes from here if you have sine x which is the angle equals to some value a then we can write the angle is arc sine of that value a so this x is an angle and that is denoted by arc sine and in many calculator instead of arc sine we use sine inverse and we are also used to uh, writing sine inverse so it's a good practice instead of writing inverse to write arc sine of that value meaning we're actually finding the value so the arc sine or the sine inverse they refer to an angle remember that it is extremely important so the reciprocal and inverse in trigonometry they are completely different so let's get back to the trigonometric identities the first thing is the reciprocal of sine x is identical to cosec x that's the first identity very very important the reciprocal of sine x is cosec x the next one is the reciprocal of cos x it's identical to sec x the reciprocal of cos x is sec x and you have to remember that sine x and cos x are the basic trigonometric ratios tan is coming from sine divided by cos x but nevertheless tan is important so the next one would be the reciprocal of tan x is identical to cot x now the full version of cosec is cosecant so the full version of this is going to be cosecant cosecant this is secant so there is a relationship between this and this is cotangent this is the full version the full version of S I N is sine S I N E. The full version of cos is cosine, so that is sine cosine. These are the full versions, and for tan, it is tangent. That is the full version. Now, <coughs> when we talk about the reciprocal identities you can also call 1 by cosec x as sin x 1 by sin x as cosec x 1 by cos x is sec x similarly 1 by sec x is cos x 1 by tan x is cot x 1 by cot x is tan x they are interchangeable so the reciprocal identities are as important now along with this there are two more identities to pay attention to you can consider them to be more identities because these are usually that you have to prove identities so one of them is the square of tan if you add one to it it is identical to sec squared x this is one of the identities and another is there's a relationship between tan and coat so the square of coat added one is identical to the relation between sec and cosec this would be cosec squared x so these two identities are usually they tell you to prove it they tell you to prove these two identities so these are not something uh, you will find very regularly but it is something that is important as well so the identities are the basic identities the reciprocal identities and the identities that they tell you to prove now in additional to these identities we have something else to work on and these are this identities sine 2x is identical to what 
cos 2x is identical to what these two identities are also very very important that needs to be remembered these two identities now sine 2x let me tell you briefly here I'll move on to the next one is 2 sine x I'm strictly talking about algebra I'm not talking about the practical thing I'm talking about al abstract 2 sine x into cos x and this is cos squared x minus sine squared x of course using this identity of sine squared and cos squared this can also be expressed as 1 minus 2 sine squared x this is the mixed version of cos 2x this is the sine version of cos 2x and this is the cos version so 2 cos squared x minus 1 so these two identities are extremely important they can also be called as the double angle this is double twice x and this is x half angle this is double twice x this is half angle x so these are the identities that are extremely needed for solving trigonometric equations.